Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This week a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Tower of God, Season 2, Episode 8. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, as I talked about at the end of last episode, I considering the title, I was like, oh, this episode deals with Emily, which I, I might have said this last week, I don't remember, but... I don't quite remember the Emily storyline. In fact, I actually kind of forgot about it, which it is there in the intro. And I've never skipped the intro, but it just, it never clicked in my head. I was like, oh, I'm watching the intro of this episode. I was like, oh, Emily's right there in the intro. And I just, it just didn't register. And I'd completely forgotten the storyline. It's not even me being like, oh, coy and like, I, I legitimately don't remember where it goes, what their rev resolution to it. Uh, I don't think there really was a full resolution to it because I, isn't that still... I don't even want to speculate because I don't want to like trample or like, you know, stumble, like just accidentally disc discussing spoilers for the future of the sh series. But I'm like, I don't, I legitimately don't remember where that storyline goes. Is that, I think it's actually kind of really interesting too. Like this whole, oh, chat, uh, ro uh, this chat bot talking back to you and stuff like that. I think it's so fascinating because obviously what the world is right now, that's not that crazy, but like. It's just interesting because like when you think about when this came out in the webtoon a couple years ago versus like that's such a more prominent thing now. So this episode coming out now is even more like, oh, the timing's so interesting when you think about that. But anyway, Emily has answers for everyone about everything. You ask her questions and she'll sometimes ask you questions too because Emily's a sentient thing that or an AI of sorts that wants to become human. So I loved it. It asked Meesing about love and Meesing got blushing. It's like, oh, I don't know about love. And then it talks to uh, Endorsey about it. Um, and it's like, oh, what's the latest in fashion? And it's like, oh, it's going, the next thing, next season in fashion is going to be red dresses. It's like, who would wear that? Oh, single people who can't find love. And Endorsey got pissed through the phone. But we do see that Emily can come through. That it's like, all right, this thing knows stuff that it shouldn't know. Like it helps out Dan, well, specifically Coon's entire squad with the... Um, with the uh the the tester under which i should also note that mole has such a cute voice i wasn't expecting that mole to have such a cute adorable voice uh, i also love that ron was because I, I i didn't fully remember that situation so i thought ron was like oh i'm, I'm messing with you i'm attacking the enemy because i know they're closing it it's like no ron was legitimately going to attack dan because he's like you idiot we wasted time following your stupid like device and it's like oh it worked out uh, uh, they had to deal with like that forearm person, Jack, uh, Jack who was immediately killed. And then you had Dan doing a speedster thing and running through the hole, which led straight to the other team's battery situation and was able to shut it down and won, but they barely skirted by because the rest of the team was under cannon fire. I do think it's interesting when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. Just kind of a funny detail. Like, oh, the only people they focus on in that scene was like Novak and the chick. Like, the chicken's in, like, the big chicken dude with, like, the giant shuriken on his back. Um, I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, but, yeah, Coon got pissed at Dan, understandably, because it's like, right, you didn't communicate what was going on, and you listened to some random chat bot. But Dan saying, like, yo, this thing has actually gotten pretty popular. As we've seen, uh, we find out it's been two years since the last episode, which, once again, this series will just, like... Once again, season one to season two, perfect time for a time skip. Season, like, just random point in season two is kind of wild. But it's like, you know, um, Hua Yung told them last, well, at least told Wang Nan last episode that they got two years until the workshop battle. So, and they've been making progress. I don't think we know what floor they're on. They're def well, obviously, they're not on floor 30, but they're closing in. And they made quite a good chunk of progress in that that two years. I mean, it takes a long time to climb these, uh, climb the floors. It depends on the test and everything you have to go through. But, you know, and once again, what is time in the grand scheme of things? Time is so relative um, only when you need it to be. Like, they make it pertinent where it's like, oh, you need to get somewhere in a certain amount of time. Like, the uh, workshop battle, you need to get there in two years. And, you know, they're like, what, two months away from it uh, when it's all said and done. So, But yeah, like uh, Emily's grown in popularity more and more. And Dan's like, right, I'm sorry. I didn't listen to you, Coon. I didn't communicate. I kind of left 
our chances of winning this test because for Kuhn, it's so important to keep climbing the tower because it's also like, I think it's to also make Rachel feel like so emboldened and let her, let her guard down more. So, which she also had that, like, it just kind of rubs you the wrong way when she's out there, like trying to comfort Dan by being like, oh my God, Kuhn shouldn't have done that. You know, it's like, it's because of you, we were able to pass the test. And you had that line where she was like, you are fast. She's like, if only you wore my legs to climb the tower. And he was like, what'd you say? She's like, nothing. Never mind. You should rest. And I'm like, that's an important line to keep in mind. Very important line. I'm sure we're going to be circling back to that line next episode, in fact. But it's just kind of like, here you are, her acting so concerned. But it's like, it's not about like, oh, like, oh, like she's trying to butter up to him. But like Kuhn said, pretend to be her friend. Just never actually have any affection for her. So, you know, we see this, you know, at least, you know, Dan's still potentially doing his job in, in, in that capacity. So... But I also love that this is how Kuhn finds out that Bomb is alive because he decides, all right, fine, I'm going to ask this thing, is the 25th Bomb still alive? And it's like, yes, he is. He is alive. And it's like, Kuhn's kind of shocked by that, but it's like, does he believe this thing? Even though it came through in this point in time, it's shown to be reliable by other people's standards, like maybe there's something to this, you know? Why would it say that because even Dan's like oh yeah like people who were believed dead for centuries this thing ended up finding them and proving that they were alive and that's what inspired uh Kuhn I, I didn't remember that Emily is where Kuhn finds that out um I also didn't remember that line of dialogue of like oh people have used Emily to find people that were supposedly dead so that's what kind of got it in Kuhn's head of well I believe Bomb's dead, but like there's some small part of me that hopes that he's not, but maybe he also, you know, maybe he wanted to believe and hoped on some level, but that's the thing, like Kuhn can be an optimist, but he's also extremely realist. Like he always buries the optimist in him because he just wants to be real with the facts of just like, right, my, my friend is dead. I have to accept that, but on some part was hoping that he'd be alive and this thing kind of confirms that. The question then becomes, well, does Kuhn believe it though? We also switch over to uh, Bomb's team, which they're in the middle of a test, and we kind of get an opportunity to see how much they've grown and they've kind of working as a team. As we didn't even get to see the whole team participate. It was only some of them, like me seeing drawing some of the enemies into a trap. They trap... Uh, Go seeing traps them with the lighthouse, and then Yua comes in and just kind of unleashes. So seems like she might have better control of her powers, or it's just a hey, we can find the enemy, so it's okay for her to go buck wild because no one's in the vicinity from our team getting hurt. Um, so that's taken care of. But the main two they have to mainly concern themselves about one of them's after Wang Nan because he's because he's like, oh my, uh, was it Puchan? My 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 chirpy. And that's, I was like, oh my God. I was like, I completely forgot about, was it um, Quetro is his name? I was like, I completely forgot about this whack job. Oh my God, how could I forget about this nut job? And he's up there like, that's the only reason why he's following Wagnon is because it's like, oh, you remind me of my bird. And um, and he was so disappointed when Wagnon tried to use the key behind his back, but his partner caught him. He's like, you try to trick me. You're not the, but in like walking down was like, whoa, don't you remember? He was like, right. Back when, like back when you were a good kid. And I even love, I love him saying it in English. Come back to me. Um, but trying to pretend he's like, yeah, I've got to get, Chirpy was yellow. I've got yellow hair. And it's like, oh, you know, Chirpy, you, I, you died. But it's like, no, I came back to you, Quetro. Don't you remember back when you were a good little boy and stuff like that? And it turns out he's like, yeah, Chirpy died because Quetro burned him alive. So, and Wagnon needs to be saved by Viol, obviously. And I love the whole thing of like, look at me. I've got three bangs. And then it turns out, well, look at Viol, who's got five. So, yeah. I was like, I'm trying to remember. I was like, it, once again, I, let me l let you know. It's been a while since I've seen season one or read season one. It's been even longer since I've read season one. It's been uh, not like at least, what, two or three years since I saw Because, I once again, I saw season one in the anime so much later. Uh, but it was like at least been two or three years, at least since I've seen season one. So I don't remember how many bangs Bomb was up to 
in season one. Because I'm like, wasn't he up to... Didn't he only have like three? This isn't the first time they've introduced bongs, right? They were introduced in season one, right? Oh, God, I don't... My memory's atrocious. I don't remember. I legitimately don't remember. like, Because I feel like this is the first time they bothered bringing up bongs. Our bang, so I was like, oh, is this the first time that's really come up? I mean, it's it's not always indicative, but it's a pretty good qualifier for how powerful you are. I feel like it definitely came up during season one. It had to, like, during, like, while Bomb was fi figuring stuff out as a wave controller. I feel like it had to come up then. Once again, I've not seen the anime of season one in so long. Once again, I have not read uh, the webtoon of season, season one of the webtoon and even in such even more time is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but yeah, uh, the main dude gives up and he's like, right, um, if you really want to, we could duke it out. But Viol's like, I don't have time to waste on any battles. He's like, oh, I guess you really do only fight Winklings. And I love that the only person who's getting so pissed about it is Wang Nun, but also Bomb's not going to take offense to that because he's like, why do, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm not doing this to prove that I'm more powerful than you. I'm becoming powerful to protect my friends. Like, I don't I don't care about that. I'm not going to get in needless fight. If you want to give up, cool. And you're trying to goat me into a fight. It's like, no, whatever gives me the best chance to keep going, you know? And once again, he, he did that with the whole love situation where he challenged love to a fight because he's like, I want to just go on my own because I don't need more people getting caught up in what I'm trying to do. No one needs to be around a fug slayer, slayer candidate like me. The more trouble it's going to bring. Neighbor. You know, he's trying to do it for everyone else's sake. So, but like I said, Wang Nan's the one that kind of got the most butt hurt about it. But like Ark Raptor had to be like, yo, calm down. Like, don't let someone's opinion of you change or what change you or whatever in that capacity it's like we won we won that's all that matters and our crafters the one is suggesting like we should take our we should slow down we've been going pretty hard for these past two years but walking i was like no we should go to the uh workshop battle that way like there's going to be some pretty oppressive items there but you see that look on um horyang's horyang's face where he's almost like i think he's kind of picking up that Wagnon isn't telling them everything but also there's this might also just it might be that or it might just be like especially the title of the next episode is like when it like the one winged devil or something like that it's something like that which I'm like that ties into Horyang's circumstances so maybe that comes up maybe that's coming up a little sooner than I thought it would or at least remembered it did so next episode might dive into that a little bit more but I think that also implies like what the conversation Wagnon and Huayung had like two years ago about the workshop battle. Uh, she he didn't tell the rest of the team, so even Viol doesn't know that that's why like Wagnon's pushing them so hard. Because if he told them the truth, they'd all be extra motivated too. But I think he also doesn't want to get like he doesn't want to get bombs like hopes up too early about like what that potentially could mean in the grand scheme of things so but it so he's focusing on it like right this is some great accomplishments we could get the items the rest of the squad would be behind it be behind it for the most part you know um but like i said i think wong Nod's like he's pulling a little bit of a coon here and keeping stuff to himself i also think it's kind of this cute thing that their prize ended up being food it's supposed to be like some really special food but it ended up being kind of nothing too special but i thought it was so cute when missing gave arc raptor some and he's blushing and he takes he's like oh yeah it's good which is so cute and i think it's supposed to be like oh remember when she handed out chocolate to literally everyone or a snack to everyone including viol but arc raptor didn't get one now he does get one and it's like right just showcasing how much this team has changed in a time we've been away from them even though it's been an episode only an episode for them it's been two years showing how they've grown as a team and how they've grown closer as a unit so but then finally at the end of the episode we get our hint to the emily situation this is after she answered coon's question about if bomb was alive or not and we see that Emily is an AI. I don't know if you would naturally jump to this conclusion or if I'm just pulling because of like what I remember the circumstances. I mean, it seems like this is what it's implying, so I don't think I'm spoiling anything. But 
there's a human at the heart of Emily, but she's not in control. Like this AI is basically using her as kind of like its foundation. And she's kind of being like, no, you're not like, you're not human. You're not human. Stop pretending like you are a wannabe. You're using me and using all this data that you're collecting in the tower for whatever reason, right? But it's like, there's a human at the heart of this. There is like an Emily, if she's even Emily, the AI itself, the chatbot might be Emily where, cause, um, but uh, the person inside might not be. But we also see that um, there's someone who's in love with her, Traveler. He's like, oh, like I wouldn't have gotten as far without someone and that someone is you. So I remember Traveler. Um, I think it might coincide with um, Quant and Leroy, if I remember correctly, as they are looking for, what is it? Wohawk Song is what they are looking for. Oh, God. Like, uh, this one, like, am I spoiling things or not? Like, isn't, uh, if I remember correctly, Mazino's tied to that, isn't he? Because isn't that where he was and what he was doing, like, after he got the Zagania, um, Zagania, like, last episode? I think he's associated with that. I don't know if that's his organization or he's just a part of it. I don't remember. Oh. But, like I said, the traveler of it all, like, like I, said, I don't even remember, like I said, all this Emily stuff, I'm like, I think I remember where it goes. The traveler stuff, I vaguely remember, but I don't know where it goes. I remember a part of that story, but I, you know, he's coming to find Emily because he's like, I, I know where you are. I know how to find you and I, I love you and you know Emily's got this whole thing about like oh wanting someone to teach her about love and it's like no you machine like what do you know about love as the real person who's hooked up to all of this is being used so like I said it's not me being coy I just don't really remember where that storyline goes but I'm interested to see where things take us going forward into the next episode like I said I think this is going to be more on Horiang circumstances if I remember correctly we're gonna the next episode might dive into his past or what he's climbing the tower for because I think earlier in the season he was like he's looking for someone if I remember correctly and this ties into that I'm trying to remember if this is like the first introduction because I, I think that happens like pre the workshop the battle work yeah the workshop battle once again I keep flipping that I think so it's going to be interesting to see where things kind of go from here. Only got a couple episodes left in the season. What is it? If it's 13 episodes, we've only got five left. So I remember some of the circumstances leading up to the battle workshop. Workshop battle. I'm sorry, I keep doing that. Um, specifically on Kuhn's team and the Rachel stuff. I remember some of that, which I'm like, hmm. Interested to see when we're going to get to that. Is it going to be episode 9? Is it going to be episode 10? But I'm just... I'm waiting for the um, the literal shoes to drop. It's just not literal, but that is me being coy about what the future holds for that team. Um, but I'm really interested to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.